I have had a life that is being defined by addiction and the addiction and in particular the models of recovery that are available for addiction is a convenient framework for addressing the problems we have in our age that are expressed extensively and identifiably through materialism and attachment. So I felt like that I was in a state of lack. I don't know what it is to be a man. I don't know what it is to be a success. I don't know what it is to have power. I don't know what it is I recognize now, even to feel at ease, even to feel serene, even to feel relaxed. It's probably only by the time I got clean from crack and heroin and alcohol that I'd noticed that I'd been in having an anxiety attack for basically my entire life. When I first told my life story, in, which is an ordinary exercise at treatment centers that help people to get rehabilitated from chemical dependency, and I was fortunate enough to go to one. When the fella read it, Chip Summers, one of the first people in recovery I ever met, when he read it, he went, oh, poor lonely little boy. And I was 27 then. So I suppose my life has been defined by addiction and addiction is in part a lack of connection an attempt to synthesize the connection to self, other and God. God of your own understanding, perhaps understood as a, a totality, a sense of unity, a unitive force, a highest principle. When it says in the Old Testament, worship no other gods than me, the implication I offer is that we are a species that worships. And if you do not access the divine, you will worship the mandil. You will worship the profane. You will worship your own identity. You will worship your belongings. You will worship the template lane before you by a culture that wants you, no, wants you, but gets you distracted and relatively dumb. I feel like real early on, Something in me, which I would now, because it's almost impossible, Stephen, not to reverse engineer these narratives, isn't it? And to thread it through with newly accrued and acquired wisdom. But I feel that like I was looking for something. I feel that there is a deep spiritual appetite within all of us for connection, the subject that you have identified as our framing for this conversation that we are having. But we do not have a culture that presents us a discourse around connection. We, we have a culture that is predicated upon individualism and materialism. Your value, and this is, I think, across the political spectrum and even in more compassionate narratives around identity, individualism is still enshrined as the centrifugal point. If you are mistaking the vehicle for the self, for the essence of the self, you can only fail. If you have not interrogated, who is this in here? What is this subjective experience that only I am having? How do I deal with the tension of the paradox and remember all energy comes from polarity, all energy comes from polarity, that I am infinitesimally small to the point of being absolutely irrelevant in a cosmic framing, and yet all reality takes place solely, as far as I know, within my consciousness. What could I have added to 10-year-old Russell's life, do you think, that would have made him feel valued? 10-year-old. I reckon, mate, now that I'm a dad, and you can't be a father to anyone else until you're a father to yourself, is a sense that who you are is all right. You're all right. You don't need to worry. That you are enough. You are sufficient. We are going to be okay. What told you otherwise? All conditions. Don't, it isn't the broad cultural message. You are insufficient. You will not be sufficient until you acquire this body, these objects, this approval, these affiliations. Hustler. <laughs> you hustler every day. All right. Um, so, so just say something I love. I'm going to talk to you for 60 seconds. Yeah. Um, but they're, and they're alive already. You can't even get someone that's dead back. Can't like my do, nan. Can't do. Can't have my nan back. I'd, have, I'd love a minute. Hundred percent. I'll take my nan. Okay. I'll take sixty seconds of me nan. I love you, nan. I'm all right. I'm not so crazy. You were right about the drugs, though. Why her? Because she was so lovely. 
it's actually loved me so much. It was so unself conscious. It was so unself conscious. Oh, you right, darling? Shame, isn't it? Oh, well, old, old twaddle. That's kibosh. What's that? Drugs you're doing? I tell you, I see on Kilroy, it lead to worse things. 60 seconds. Let her know you're okay. Yes. You're okay? Yes. Perfect. <laughs>